In this video, I'll be showing you how to make an Imperial style Warhammer 40k bunker made easy. Now, some of you might recognize this. It is inspired by the Games Workshop War of Martyrs Imperial Bunker, but obviously it's not an exact replica because, you know, I don't want to get sued. Anyway, I'll show you how I made it. Let's do it. Now for this build, I have done some PDF templates that will be available in the link in the description. Now you will probably need to use my templates to get the exact look that I have here. Feel free though to either just make your own templates or Miscast has done a video where he does a, a template for like a more classic looking bunker and I will leave a link in the description to that as well. So then I'm obviously going to print off my templates and I'm going to cut them out and glue them to some foam board. So foam board 5mm thick is the main material here. I'm going to glue my template on just using a glue stick. You could probably use anything you like but a glue stick makes it easier to remove. And then it's a simple case of cutting out the shapes. So it's various rectangles that hopefully just by looking at the templates you'll know how to cut them out. So I think for the bunker without the roofs it's eight pieces and then it's two pieces for the roof. But yeah, just cut them out and you'll end up sort of looking something like this. There's a couple of holes that were much better cutting out now. So that's the door on the back, which I technically have changed the shape of after filming this, but the door on the back and the shooty holes in the front trademark. So well, actually just the shooty hole on the short side. We'll come to the big front part in a second. So the order in which we glue this together is important and as is where you glue it to. So basically we want to get our back wall and we want to glue the sides to the side of the back wall. So we're going to put the glue on the edges of the back wall and then push the, the sides together. And then we're going to glue in the middle and the middle is uh, lines up with where the back wall height changes. So you can line that up by just a, a bead of hot glue. And then I do glue on the front short side. Now the version I actually use here doesn't have a little cutout in the top. So off camera, I go back and, and redo that bit. So for the front left of the building, the main shooty hole section or whatever you want to call it, we have these two diagonal walls. Now this can be a little bit tricky to explain, but what we're going to do is obviously we've cut them out of foam board. What we need to do is sort of chafer the edge or bevel the edge at a 45 degree angle. Now the way that I'm going to do this is simply I'm going to put it on my cutting mat and eyeball the 45 degree edge down each side. Now you need to make sure it's sort of like a mirror version of it as in that both inward angles are pointing to each other. The reason that is important is because the way that we're going to glue it. So you need to do it like that. Once I had successfully done my 45 degree angles, I then cut out the shooty hole uh, part of it. The reason I do that after chafering the edges to 45 degrees is in case you mess it up, you know, you're just spending less time. And uh, once you've done that on both your pieces, we can go ahead and start gluing this. Now, I recommend here the way that I did this is I glued one section of the diagonal wall and that was the one on the far left then i take the actual front very front of the building now i cut out the shooty hole but technically this is two different pieces because there's a giant hole in between them and then you simply take that which should have a straight edge and that'll glue the top section to the top of it and the bottom to the bottom of it then relatively quickly i take the other diagonal wall put glue on both the edges and glue that to the main part of the building that's in the middle and then you'll have your main shape to this building then we're going to take the PDF for the roof sections and cut them out of foam board as well so when you cut out the roof sections you want to make sure you dry fit these it's important that you do that because if the roof section simply won't fit in the hole then you've got no chance of gluing it if it is too big simply just trim down the edges so that it eventually fits it might not be perfect first time around. Then we want the roof sections to be completely flush with the back walls. To achieve the flushness, what we're going to do is measure the back wall section. So there's going to be two roof sections. We're going to measure that, then minus five millimeters off that measurement. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. And we're going to cut out pieces of foam board that are that length or height, depending on how you want to phrase it. And we're going to glue those into the inside of the building. And you want to make sure here that what we're doing is we're creating a nice little like ledge so that our roof sections can fit onto it. Yes, you could eyeball it and just hot glue it in place. But I think doing this with the little extra bits of foam board will make sure that you get a nice flush section. So you do that for the left upper bit and you do that for the right 
shorter side bit and then you'll have essentially what is the main shape of this building and it's you could just use it like this but we are going to add some detail and the way we're going to detail it is with cereal box any cereal box will do even little cheap cardstock would do but cereal box has a nice thickness to it now again i've got some templates here so we're going to cut out one for the shooty holes now it's two different ones for the shooty hole because obviously the shooty hole on the right side is a specific size the shooty hole on the diagonal side can be a little bit problematic in the sense that the measurements are very fine now the reason i provided the template here is because the measurements are very fine now once you've got them for the shooty hole the one that it where it sort of bends around the walls just sort of push it into into place gently and you'll see where the bends are and then what i do is i just bend that with my finger sort of away from the wall and it'll eventually just sort of settle on a nice amount it's trial and error if you mess it up just quickly remove it I would recommend that you glue it with PVA so that you can take your time and slot it into place. I use PVA and super glue because I wanted to make the video as quick as possible. But glue the little rims around the shooty holes and we'll move on to the top sections which are sort of like the barricade sections at the top, the little walls where the people would shoot over it. Getting the card to match the front sections with the little like cutouts can be a little problematic. What I've actually done is provide a template again. Now it's not a perfect template here, but you know, if you cut it out of card as best you can, I've created like a mirror version of it. So one section will fit nicely on the front left and the other section will sit, fit vaguely nicely on the front right. You will have to trim it to size, but you know, nothing's perfect, I guess. Once you've cut that out of the card, obviously we're going to glue that to the front. Again, again, if you use PVA here, you'll have more time to position it. The upside of using a bit of super glue means it will stick quite quickly though. Basically, we're going to put card around all of the front, all of the very top of the walls, and all of the sort of inside of the walls around the top as well. The thickness of this card, by the way, that I'm using is 5 mil. I also put some card in the windows, not just at the front, but also covering the foam board that's visible. You might have a little bit of a problem for the diagonal walls. I recommend that you just get a piece of your card, put it over it and cut it at a 45 angle and then cut it again at the right place for a 45 degree angle. Hopefully just seeing it will make sense. For the door, I had to correct the shape of my door using a little bit of foam board. But again, I've made a template here. You cut out the template, glue that to some cardboard, and then cut that out. Glue that to the door frame. Then I made a little door out of just two sections of the cereal box. Nothing fancy here with the cutout that I used from creating the frame of the door. I used that as sort of like the back of the door. Then I copy around it and get another shape. So I've got two sections that are the sides of the door. Then I just free, freely measured a door shape, I tried to explain, and then just cut out some holes, glued the two sections together, and I ended up with a decent looking door. Um, you can do anything you like there. To glue my door into place, I got another bit of foam board that was larger than the door but would actually fit in the building, and I glued my door to that, and then I glued the foam board to the back of the building so the door was in place. For a ladder on the back, something from Eric's Hobby Workshop, these little plastic like tennis rackets that you can get from like a pound shop or a dollar shop, you can even get them on eBay, very cheap and easy ladders so I just cut out a ladder using that. You could do this with barbecue sticks if you wanted but yeah I just cut out my ladder so it was the right size, then I glued that to some card again just simply because I want it's easier to glue it to rather than say using hot glue and trying to glue it to the foam board. Um, if you use hot glue though you can end up with some really ugly messes. And then uh, you may have noticed on the Games Workshop version they have like a, an Aquila. Now I'm not going to necessarily provide a link to this. I might do, I'm not sure because I believe it's property of Games Workshop and I, I don't want them to come after me. But um, basically I, I printed a version of the Aquila off and I glued it to some cheap EVA sheets from like the Hobbycraft or something like that. Now I just used EVA because it cuts out very nicely and it's got a nice thickness to it. I could have used chipboard and I prob the problem with chipboard is it wouldn't really bend and I could have used cereal box but all in all I use this EVA foam. It's not very expensive. I glued it to it and I cut, I cut around it the best I could. Now I've not done the best job in the world here. The EVA foam cuts nicely but not 
it's not very good at this sort of like small scale there were certain bits to the aquila that i just tried to do like the feet and then just couldn't do so uh, it's a very basic shape of the aquila and um, i recommend that you just do a basic version of it and don't worry about it too much and um, the eva is fantastic cereal box would have also have done once i'd cut out the rush shape though what i did was i sort of cut out slits for the wings and you know I, i've got to say it was looking bad whilst i was doing it but i was like i'll just finish it and then once i did finish it i was like you know what it, it's all right <laughs> i'm not necessarily a, a detailed kind of crafter guy but it, it actually looked all right i glued that to the front of the building I made some little details like a little panel for the back but you don't necessarily have to do stuff like that it's just optional. I tried a couple of different things to get some detail on the sides of the buildings. Now in the original version of this there was actually doors here but the reason I don't use doors is because this is designed to go in like a trench. Obviously the version I'm doing is not designed for that so I just cut out some random EVA shapes and just glue them to the side of the buildings using PVA. Now I have some of this sort of diamond plated plastic card stuff for the roof that actually matches the GW version perfectly. You don't have to use this you could just use card but you know I had it and I've probably had it for like five years and never used it so I thought I would use it here. Again I've made a template of this just so you can cut it out. I also have a circle on this which is going to be like a bunker hatch. Whatever design you decide to go with for the roof just glue that to the top of the roof both the taller bit and the shorter side. I make a hatch just using a bit of cardboard cut it out a hole for the plastic card and then got a piece of card made the inside of it and then cut like a diagonal line just so it would look like a hatch and then I also had a little rim that goes on top of that to add a bit of depth to it. Nothing spectacular here. I, I tried a couple of things and some things work, some things don't work. Then I finish off with just some more like cladding of the side of the foam board using the five millimeter strips. So now I go all the way down the backs as well and I create like a little frame on the back wall and pretty much that's it done. Once you've got your basic shape and everything's glued, everything's glued in place before painting, I do recommend that you go in with a bit of filler and you cover up all of the join lines and the seam lines. So that could be on the front walls, it could be at the roof, uh, where the roof has gone on and it's not, there's like little gaps. Bit of filler, bit of spackle for you Americans. It'll cover up everything, everything nicely. Anything where it looks really ugly, just get a bit of sandpaper and just sand it down as well. I ended up with gaps in the in the cereal box on, on the tops, on the frames of the walls. I ended up with gaps there, which is natural because we're going to have to do them in different sections. Bit of filler though, you can barely see it. Nice. For the painting, I'm going to get some black paint with a small amount of PVA and what I'm going to do here, when well, I'm going to cover the whole thing and the PVA is going to help solidify it, especially the foam sections, but the key thing here is I'm going to try and get a bit of texture by stippling at the paint. Now I'm not going for like super super textured here, we just want something something there that isn't plain foam board. Now sand wouldn't really work for this so I do believe like a little stipple of some thick black paint will get what you want. If you're going to dry brush it up then this will give you something to like dry brush. I'm personally not going to dry brush it. What I did after I've got my black paint um, all over it is I take a spray can and just spray it grey with a bit of a white just to give a bit of a highlight. You could do that with a brush. I was just short on time. Then I take a dark metallic grey and mix in with a bit of normal grey paint because I don't want it to be super metallic and I paint the, the rims around the shooty holes. Again I'm not sure of the technical name for that, somebody has once posted that in one of my videos but I'm never going to remember it and I paint the rims around the top to give it a nice like little metallic -y look. I also paint the Aquila sort of like a dark goldy bronze and I paint the door the same colour and the roof the same colour. Then I give everything a black wash, a homemade black wash, so literally just black paint and water and one drop of dish soap and uh, that's it. Just before we go to the final end bit then, if you enjoyed this video do make sure you like the video. If you're not already subscribed to the channel and you're interested in terrain, please do so, that would really help. If you really want to support the channel then there is always Patreon but there's no pressure there. Let's crack on. So I do not mean to congratulate myself too much but I think this 
bunker has come out looking like one of the better pieces of terrain that I have made on the channel so far. I just really like it. Now when I've painted it I've just given it a wash at the end and then I've not dry brushed it up. That is to keep that sort of like grim aesthetic, the grim dark gritty aesthetic and I really like that. The main materials are just foam board and card. The plastic card that's embossed on top is optional as is the EVA foam. Obviously I've done my little Aquila thing out of EVA. You could just use card if that that's all you have but ultimately I really 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 like the way that this looks there are a couple of things where I could maybe improve it like on the right hand side of it the short wall maybe in the gap I could have put something but you know it is what it is I'm really happy with it Thank you very much for watching. If you make something like this from one of my videos, do come across to the Facebook group and post it there. I would love to see it. Or you can go check out this ruined building. It's pretty 40k style ruined building. Um, I'm sure you'll enjoy that. Have a beautiful day. Goodbye.